Hello everyone and welcome to yet again another Friday New Product Post. We've actually got a very special and probably very long post this week as we have special guests all the way out from New York to talk about their new products. So let's see what we've got for this week. So here we've got Jordan, which is one of the co-founders of Atlas Scientific. You might know Atlas Scientific um, as one of the companies that we carry. We actually carry their pH kit with the buffers and the solution and the probe and all that. We decided to actually carry more products from them. So Jordan is here as a representative and co-founder of Atlas Scientific to talk a little bit more about what their company does. We took on uh, this task of uh, making sensors for uh, the government in New York City. And they asked us to make uh, uh, all of these stormwater sensors uh, to find out what's in stormwater. But what we did in the process is we learned how to make this equipment. Why didn't the government just go out and get something that already existed? Because you can't buy it. You think you can. Because like one of the things we make is, a, is a, an embedded pH system. Mm -hmm. And people go, oh, pH meters, those exist all over the place. If you need to know the pH in a, in a, in a storm sewer, mm -hmm. right, underground, you need to get that information to a computer system. Now, how are you going to do it? Well, you can open up a pH meter and try to hack it, but the meter itself isn't even designed to do what you're doing. And now you're getting into some really crazy stuff. The first thing that people are going to say is, how do we know it's accurate once you've already done that? Basically what he's telling me is that you can buy this probe, you can dip it in something, and you can get a voltage out of it. Very similarly to where you take an accelerometer, a gyro, if anyone has ever used one of those, you plug it in and you get you know, some value or some reading, but it doesn't necessarily tell you acceleration or tell you rotation. You have to interpret that data. For this type of stuff, that gets very complicated, right? You can't oh, just yeah. take the voltage out of it and expect that to give you a meaningful number. You have to apply the meaning to the, to the voltage. And so what we did is we sat down and redesigned how the entire uh, uh, system is done, like how pH is read, and make it something that someone today can use. Ultimately what these guys do is they take a lot of very common things that you would be sensing, like pH, um, DO, dissolved oxygen, electrical conductivity, um, what flow meter, and um, what's the other one that we got? The color. The color. You've got all these sensors. The sensors is not the hard part, but translating that into usable data is where the magic lies. So what these guys do is they give you the ability to take the probe, take electronics that they make that interfaces well with it, and then gives you uh, the ability to calibrate it by different buffer solutions or different solutions that will allow you to calibrate it so that when you take a reading, you know that you're getting the proper reading. And they package all these in these nice little bundles. And I mean, you guys even have Arduino libraries for some of this stuff. So yeah. you can hook up an Arduino, get a reading out of it, and you're good to go. When you get into doing scientific research, there's a lot on your plate. But in the end, what you need is, if you want, let's say, dissolved oxygen, you need the answer. You don't need all of the theory behind it and everything. We took care of all of that difficult end and just output answer. So you can get the readings, trust the readings, and move on. And you output everything just as basic serial, right? basic serial. Now the reason we do that is actually really important. Those signals are really robust. They can travel long distances and when you're working with sensors and you have to put them outdoors or in a uh, in a uh, conduit of other, sen you know, of other sensors passing through this line, you want to make sure that your data is going to get from A to B. And we always use RS-232. It's the best way of doing it for long distances. It always works. It's easy to debug and it's reliable. So now that we know a little bit more about um, the basis behind some of these things and um, the reason for carrying these products, um, they're, you know, they're unique and they cr were created out of a need. So let's take a look at some of the different kits, do a little bit of explanation on what each kit is, and then we've got a little demo set up. So first up, we've got this. This is the electrical conductivity kit. And why would someone need to know electrical conductivity? Yeah, electrical conductivity tells you the dissolved solids that are in the water. Pure water would have nothing in it. And then as you dissolve more material in it, like in the ocean, right, the dissolved solids are very, very high. Okay, so it doesn't tell you what's in there, but the fact that this might not be perfectly pure water, there are some solids in here. Yeah, right? something's present. Okay. And at what level? And so we've got this guy, which is the probe, right? And then we've got um, these guys. Tell me what these are. Yeah, now these are uh, calibration solutions. Okay. Now you need calibration solutions to give the uh, sensor, you know, some points to understand where it is in the world. And you just put the probe in, tell it what it's in, and then boom, 
it has a reference point. And this kit also comes with um, just, you know, a nice BNC connector to connect directly into the probe. And then we've also got this adorable little breakout board for the BNC, so you can actually solder it in there. And it also comes with this guy. This is, um, what, do you, what do you call this? This is the conductivity sensing circuit. And that interprets the data from the probe and gives you a, uh, uh, an RS-232 string telling you the conductivity of the water, the uh, total dissolved solids, and the salinity of the water that you're testing. So we take this, take the cap off, connect it into here, and then connect this guy into this, dip it in the solution, calibrate it, and then dip it in our end whatever it is we're trying to test, you and that it. just spits out some serial that tells us what the electrical conductivity is. That's it. This next kit is a dissolved oxygen kit. Very similarly to the electrical conductivity kit, dissolved oxygen contains a probe, which, you know, all these probes are different, of course, right? Yeah. And um, we've got this. This is a little different. Can you explain that? Most of the equipment that we make, make comes with a calibration solution, and this is not. This is a, a confirmation solution. Because there's oxygen everywhere, when you uh, connect the uh, dissolved oxygen probe to the circuit and you start running it, you're going to see numbers coming out, and that's the oxygen level. But how do you know? How can you really tell that that's correct, that it's working properly? So what we did is we created this, uh, this solution that has zero oxygen in it. And when you put your probe into the uh, solution, um, you're going to start to see the oxygen level drop very quickly. And when you see that, it indicates, okay, this is working, I have it wired correctly, the data is correct. And then, of course, we have another little breakout. Um, same thing, communicates over serial and gives you values. Everything operates in the same exact manner. Gotcha. So when you're setting something up, it's very easy to start putting pieces together. They all operate the same. They use the same command structure, everything. And so basically, what is dissolved oxygen then? It's how much oxygen is dissolved in water. A lot of our customers are like uh, fish farmers, and you know we get things like, I have 100,000 shrimp in a tank, but I'm losing 30,000 of them a week, you know, <laughs> seriously, because, and they don't know when the oxygen level is dropping too okay. low. Um, you get people doing uh, research into storm water, into pollution control, you know, uh, a lot of guys just doing uh, fish tank hobby stuff. Dissolved oxygen can be used in a variety of areas. Next up, we've got this. This is a little bit different. Um, this is the flow meter kit, and this is the small one. You guys actually make three, but we're carrying the small one. And what's a little bit different about this is that we're testing water flow. So tell me what that guy is. Yeah, this is just a nice little 80 mesh pre-filter. And so you have your water coming in, and uh, it connects to the flow meter, right, yeah. which is here. And the flow meter, it's cool because, you know, it has like a little arrow, and it shows you which way the flow goes. And then uh, if you were going to use it as a pre-filter, you know, you just screw this in like this. And so... You know, you get all the, uh, the the debris out before it goes into the meter. So yeah, your water goes through this, gets filtered, goes in this, and this, um, what kind of um, sensor is inside here basically? Inside here, there's a little tiny turbine, and the turbine gives you pulses, uh, and the pulses uh, are measured not, it's not just the pulses, it's uh, also over time. So it gets into like some fancy timing to get the readings very, very accurate. The timing gets so precise that you can't just set it up on an Arduino and have it do five other things and still get accurate flow rates. So we found that you had to break it out into this little circuit to do it. And then this just spits out an RS-232, the rate of flow, how much has gone through, it gives you alarms and things okay. like that. If anyone here has run into using um, interrupts or anything like that trying to measure RPM, if you run anything else on that device, that has the interrupts on it, you're, you're interrupting your other code. And if you run too many other things, you're not going to get an accurate RPM reading. So what makes this nice is it comes with its own little board that takes care of all that. You can't interrupt this. You can't have it do anything else. And it'll just give you a nice, accurate reading of what your flow is. That's the thing. Everything we make, we design to be very, very accurate, which is why we have to, you know, break things out into these little little sub subsections because you just can't do it. It's mm -hmm. too much for the chips. Here is yet another product um, from Atlas Scientific. This is basically a color sensor, is it not? Yeah. It's a lot similar to the um, color sensor breakouts that we have, 
except for you guys have spent the time to put the electronics into this and actually seal it up to give a very usable, easy to read output. At the end of this, it's probably gonna be hard to see in the video, but we've got an actual color sensor at the end of it. It's completely sealed on the front and the back. And then at the end of this, we've just got a few wires coming out of it. So you hook this up, you get a real RGB value, and you can also measure luminosity over this too, right? Yeah, so it gives you RGB from 0 to 255, like RGB, right? And a comma-separated value. The other thing that it'll do is it'll tell you the, uh, the lux of the light. It'll say the lux for R, the lux for G, the lux for B, and then the total. And it'll also tell you if it's receiving um, uh, UV or IR. It can't tell you much about it, but it can say, hey, I'm seeing a little bit of it coming in. Um, and the idea is that, you know, it's in this housing. You can put it anywhere. You can put it outside, you know, you can put it in a dirty environment, and you don't have to worry about how you're going to derive the answer. A lot of color sensors, you know, you look at them and you go, oh, wow. And then you start to read the data sheet and you, the level of complexity to get it from you know, detecting the pulses to getting a true RGB output. That's a huge jump. And so we try to kill two birds with one stone, give you the answer and give it to you in a housing where it's not gonna get damaged. And you were even telling me you've got a little um, piece of software. You can hook this up to the computer, point at a color, and actually view that color on your screen. Yeah, and that's a really cool thing. So you can actually see how well it works. I mean, you put it to red and you see red on the screen. Put it to blue and you'll see blue. And lastly, um, to tie all these things together, we've got this little guy. Um, this is their logger. There's a lot of differences in loggers and their logger is designed pretty specifically to go with your products, but for very, very good reason. Um, this does not use an SD card, it just uses a... Um, yeah, just a IC. solid state memory. You can epoxy this thing, seal the enclosure, never have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about an SD card failing, you don't have to worry about an SD card being formatted incorrectly or stop writing halfway through or failing or getting misplaced. You've just got this tiny little guy that essentially won't fail. It doesn't have any moving parts. It doesn't have anything to mess up with it. Let's say, um, you know, like we were working uh, outdoors in, uh, in the sewer systems and, you know, we're measuring all of these parameters and you have a, uh, like an SD card and you're storing the information on it. What ends up happening is it's always something. You drop the card. You forget to put the new card in. The card didn't work properly. You didn't you format know, it, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you want to you wanna leave because you're in the sewer and you're like, oh, hurry up, and you're putting it all back together and you forget. And then you lose two or three weeks of data. And the other thing about this is when you're putting electronics, sensitive electronics, outside, the best thing to do that we've discovered is to epoxy the whole thing. You can't epoxy, you know, an SD card. So we came up with this system where you, you just take data, throw it into the, uh, into the memory, and then when you want to pull it back, you know, like we would use uh, waterproof uh, connectors, plug into the device and say, give me back the data, and it would just, sh just stream it out, and then uh, it's ready to go to keep logging. So if you're looking for just a simple logger to, you know, even log um, GPS serial data probably, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, something like this that you can pot cover an epoxy weather seal. Great little logger. So here we've got a great little demo set up to show the DO probe in action. We've got the dissolved oxygen probe sitting in here, connected to the little breakout and connected into an Arduino, of course, and a screen. So what's going on here? We're looking at how much oxygen is dissolved in this beaker of water. And uh, the uh, answer comes out as uh, around 11.5 uh, milligrams per milliliter. And this is just our tap water, correct? Yeah, this is just tap water from SparkFun. The thing is, is, you know, because there's uh, oxygen everywhere, how do you know the device is working? And so we have, uh, we provide a, a zero DO solution. And now what we're going to do is actually pour that in just by, you know, opening the valve here. And as it goes in, even though it's falling through the air, even though it's mixing, uh, in a few seconds, you'll start to see the oxygen level start dropping. Okay. And there it goes, 10, now it'll just keep going down. 
The thing about dissolved oxygen is the answer doesn't come immediately. It takes about one to three minutes to get the exact answer. Oh, yeah. And that's what's happening here. You can see actually now it's falling quite rapidly. It's almost to six. Yeah, and it's just going to go all the way down to zero. I can shut the mixer off now. It's well stirred. And the chemical that we put in is just eating up all the oxygen in the water. The good thing about this is what it does is it just lets you know, oh, okay, my setup is correct, the thing is working. And as you can see, it's definitely working. So here we've got pretty much the same looking setup, but we've changed out the probes and changed out the electronics, and now we're going to be testing um, electrical conductivity, correct? Yeah, you can see we put so some salt in the water to give it a baseline. And by adding, you know, just blue salty water, you'll start to see the conductivity starts to rise quite rapidly. Along and with the dissolved solids too. Yeah, and then you see as it goes, the salinity starts going up. It reads the salinity in the water, it reads the conductivity, and it gives you a simple string of already compiled information. So there you have it, a very special new product post. Um, special thanks to Atlas Scientific for coming here and showing us their product, explaining the product, because quite frankly, I'm not going to be able to explain it well. So thanks to them for coming. Thank thanks. you. And um, we'll see you again next week. We've got even more new products. As always, check out the rest of the new product posts for all the other products that we have for this week. Thanks for watching, and see you again next week.